to scatter together. Hi, we're the Patterson family and I'm Rodney. Hello, I'm Oliver and this is Delilah. I'm Mary. I'm Gillian. Hi, I'm Grace. Hello, I'm Ian. And I'm Carl. And day to day is pretty busy here as you can imagine. We've got university students, we've got kids at school, so we're pretty busy and online loads. But we're really looking forward to our worship together today. So on that note, and over to you, Paul and Ruth. God is the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper, and the light in the darkness. Often a passage of scripture or a song can capture what we're feeling at certain times. I have found myself singing this song often. We hope to become familiar with it over the next few weeks, so that the words of it sink deep into our hearts and minds.
Amen. And thank you to Ruth and Paul for leading us in the song. And thank you to the Pattersons for getting us started right back at the very beginning there. And thanks to Janice as well for that little reminder that this is one of those songs that we're really pressing into at the minute. Just those words, allowing them to soak and seep into our minds through these weeks of worry and fear. It's just um, one of those songs that really helps. Um, it really helps me as well that it's a really catchy tune of a song. I don't know about you. I have been singing it all week. I know Janice said she has as well and Michelle has told us she has as well. It just is one of those tunes that uh, an earworm is not what they call it. It kind of um, gets stuck in your head in a good way um, and it's really good when a tune like that can keep coming back to mind. It's really good that there are such fantastic words to go with it. So when you find yourself going Maker, uh, you're actually able to remember those words, Waymaker, Promise Keeper, Light in the Darkness. So not just the tune, but the words keep reminding us, reminding us of those, uh, those foundational truths. Fantastic, fantastic. So folks, uh, Oh, lots of things going on today. Um, as you can see, I'm trying to make it look as if I work in the kitchen occasionally. Ha ha ha. Um, so more about that later on. Uh, but first of all, it is the 14th of February, the Feast of St. Valentine, the patron saint of chocolates and soppy cards and terrible slushy movies that don't have enough spaceship explosions in them. But we thought it would be fantastic on Valentine's Day. Wouldn't it be really cool if in our beaver community we had a really proper love story to celebrate? Well. Hello, I'm Ken and this is Elizabeth and we're both part of the Church Touchline Project, which means that every week we make a couple of phone calls to people who may feel isolated or housebound. It's just a quick catch-up to see how everyone is doing and if anyone needs anything. So Ken was making one of his calls last week to Stanley and May and there was a very special celebration imminent. Stanley and May celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary last Tuesday and here are some of the pictures that have been sent to us by their, da their daughter Catherine. Fortunately, we were tipped off so we were able to get organised to take them some flowers. Friends from the lunch bunch and other friends sent cards and the church delivered a basket of fruit. You would know Stanley as one of the troublemakers in the very back row of the church, up there with Cecil and John. And they are also both very involved in everything to do with the lunch bunch. So May and Stanley, can we congratulate you on behalf of everyone here at Beaver. You are a great inspiration to us all. Keep going. Brilliant. So congratulations, May and Stanley, and thanks to Ken and Elizabeth for bringing us that uh, love story for St. Valentine's Day. How perfect is that? Right, back to the kitchen. Don't worry, I'm not getting the bread maker out again today. This is uh, much less ambitious uh, today. I'm actually getting ready for Pancake Tuesday. And we thought, even though we are scattered, this would be something worth kind of marking and celebrating and joining in together as a church community. So we're going to, oh, this is another experiment, we're going to run a thing on Tuesday on Zoom called Flippin' Pancakes. So at six o'clock on Tuesday night, if you click, there'll be a link on the website, same place as you click the link to join Scattered Together. Click the link at six o'clock on Tuesday and we'll connect on Zoom. And the idea is if you can take your laptop or your phone or iPad or whatever you use to watch the service with, set it. Now, be careful, don't put it on the cooker or anything crazy. Make sure it's uh, away from flying flour and flipping pancakes and all the rest of it. But try and set your computer somewhere in the kitchen 
just so that we can see and chat to each other so that while we're making and flipping our pancakes, we can laugh at each other and just have a bit of chat and make sure that we're just doing it all together. Our hostess is going to be Katie Kelly. Uh, so she's gonna lead us through mixing our pancake mixture. You need some butter, some flour, some eggs, and some milk, and that's about it. Gonna be nothing all that fancy about all of this, uh, but we'll just make our pancake mixture. Make sure you also have, if you want something fancy to put on the pancake, so you might just be old school, sugar and lemon does the job, or maybe you want to make something very, very uh, impressive, a, a, a fruit compote or something like that. Um, or maybe, like me, you just prefer to slather the good stuff onto your pancakes. But uh, if you just have a bowl, a pan, and the ingredients at the ready, click the link at six o'clock. Hopefully the technology will be our friend and we'll be able to laugh at each other, have some competitive pancake flipping and just enjoy being in each other's company as we make our pancakes on Tuesday night. So that's the plan for Tuesday. Incredible, isn't it? If Tuesday is pancake day, then that means that Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. Sometimes seems to me as if it's only a few minutes since Christmas and New Year, but here we are now getting ready for Ash Wednesday and then into Lent and towards Holy Week and towards Easter. So that means that from this week, from next Sunday onwards, we're going to be starting a whole new series as part of Scattered Together. We've also got lots of exciting stuff during Lent for our huddles to join in, and we are also going to try and start a new group as well during Lent. So. Keep your eye open on the website and the emails for the details about all of that. Uh, loads of good stuff going on. But also then that means that from next Sunday onwards, we're going to be on a new topic for Scattered Together. And that means that today is the last day of our little series on what it means to belong. And if you remember, we started off a couple of weeks ago, I was up on a freezing windswept knocker monument going through my wallet and all of my all of my belonging cards, all my membership cards to the groups that I belong to, the caravan club, because we're so cool, the bank that I belong to, the club card schemes that I belong to, the uh, IKEA family that I belong to, all these um, little symbols of uh, belonging. But as Adrian has opened up this whole topic to us over these last couple of weeks, just makes me realise that belonging to the church, belonging to the family of God is something so profound and life-changing and world-changing that it makes all of these other belonging cards just fade by comparison. It's just something so, um, something really worth celebrating. And it's been a really good process over these last couple of weeks of starting to understand what we belong to and feel like we do belong to it and choose to belong to it and love belonging to it more and more. So ah, enough from me to bring all of that to a close now over to Adrian. Good morning. It's been a chilly week hasn't it? One of the great and quirky things about living on this island is that every year when winter comes around it's like for us it's the first time now, we don't mind the rain. We're obviously, we're used to the rain and we just get on with life, really. But you see, when it gets colder, when it gets frosty or freezes or snow, it's like, it's like we've never seen it before and we're never ready and we can't find the, um, the thing for scraping the car window and we can't find our boots. And Anyway, it is amazing how we're, it seems, it just comes like a shock to us every year. But we're at a wee moment where is it possible things beginning to change? Um, Christmas and the new year are a sort of already a bit of a distant memory behind us. Lent, just a few days away, Ash Wednesday, Shrove Tuesday, the run up to Easter, spring, the daffodils are starting to appear, is a new season on its way. And we're in that little twilight moment. I imagine it's a bit like if you were sailing a, a small boat from, let's guess, Carrick Fergus over to Scotland. There, there must be a moment, or maybe maybe quite a bit of time, in the middle there where Carrick Fergus has disappeared, Northern Ireland has disappeared into the background. But yet where you're going hasn't yet started to appear. And there's that wee feeling in the middle of, um, 
It's not in front, nor is it behind. I've wanted to use a couple of words for years and I've suddenly found a way to fit them in here. So listen to this. Whence we came is disappearing and whither we are going is not yet formed. That brought a wee bit of beauty to the whole thing, didn't it? John Key sent me something back early in January and it came from the 24-7 prayer organisation. And just one sentence I want to read to you. Churches which flourish on the other side of this pandemic won't necessarily be the ones that created the best content during the crisis, but rather those that engendered a sense of belonging throughout the isolation of this season. Just that second bit. But rather those that engendered a sense of belonging throughout the isolation of this season. Now you can see where the last few weeks have come from, partly inspired by the themes and ideas in that of how can we be belonging? How can we be connected? That might be the secret for businesses and schools and sports clubs and everything else as well. But anyway, we've been looking at something. Let's do a wee quick recap. Rosie kicked us off uh, with these words. But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Body parts. The importance of realising that we're all different, but yet all connected, and the whole thing only works when the connections work. And at the minute, the connections are things like Zooming and listening and writing and delivering and uh, listening and serving and filming and editing and making phone calls and praying and cooking and shopping and getting back in and asking neighbours and friends if they need help and all sorts of ways. We go on connecting and being something where we belong to one another. The only thing we can't do is meet in crowds or even in small groups. But in many other ways, we can still be connected. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. Being family. And in that passage, that, that little verse that we quoted there from Ephesians, it wasn't that a new family was started. It was that we were invited or adopted into the family that already existed. The family that is God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, with that very DNA stretching right out through this family that we now call the church. But it's not a separate family from God. It's the adopted family of God, adopted into him. So it's safe and secure and strong and reliable. So much more than many people's experience of, of the normal human family. Jesus went up on a mountainside and called to him those he wanted, and they came to him. Jesus is at the centre. He's the common factor in all of the belonging. And just like the group of 12 and the group of women who were joined together, they gathered round Jesus together. So now pause to think about this a wee bit deeper. Jesus promised that he would be with us forever. So he's with you at your kitchen table or sitting in the sitting room or wherever you are today. But he's with me as well. And I'll be sitting in the kitchen when we're all watching this. It's the Holy Spirit's ministry to make God present with us wherever we happen to be. But if God's with you and God's with me, in some incredibly mysterious way, we're connected to one another. This is called scattered together. But together is still part of this. We are gathered in the presence of God, around God and with God. He's called us into that place to be with him. And he has provided the way to that place. It's called faith. And when we put our faith and trust in God, we find ourselves strangely close to him. Like right there with us. And that makes us connected. I experienced this in quite a bizarre way once. I walked into a church on a Sunday morning, one summer, a number of years ago, in a little village outside Kampala, which is in Uganda. 
and I was welcomed as a member of the family before they even knew my name. That's the mystery of this belonging. That is God's family. Now this family, this family overflows into our world. So last week we began to sense that there is more to this and um, Ian read to us. Then Mary took a 12 ounce jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard and she anointed Jesus' feet with it, wiping his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance. The house was filled with the fragrance. The aroma, the salt, the yeast that we talked about. Are we sitting and its people are weary? And so are we, because we're part of all of that. But we are still an aroma. Weariness was the experience of a Galilean carpenter one night. It was a Thursday night in a garden called Gethsemane. So weary, so tired, so anxious that he was weeping his own blood. But yet he went on that very night and into the next day to be an aroma that would change the nature of our world. And he calls us to follow him in that. So I think we need to acknowledge our struggles. We need to acknowledge our weariness, maybe even our downheartedness at times. There's nothing wrong with acknowledging those things. And for those who are at the sharp end of caring in the midst of this pandemic, those who are working in education and food and health and in all sorts of ways to keep the whole thing going, we owe you a lot. And we appreciate that you have every reason in the world to be weary. And those who are living alone, feeling isolated and feeling weary of it all. Those looking after the kids and working and teaching them. And some, some of you have had babies during this pandemic and the rest of us haven't even seen them in real life yet. Plenty of reason to acknowledge that we could be weary and worn down by it all. But nonetheless, we are an aroma. And as we work our way into Lent this year, I want us to take seriously what that might mean to be a weary aroma. To be salt that isn't quite as salty maybe as it could be, or to be yeast that is a bit deflated. But nonetheless, we still are these things. Way back last summer, Michael Wardlow uh, introduced us to the, uh, the word saunter. And he introduced us to the phrase a la santer, which is what pilgrimage, pilgrims described uh, many centuries ago when they were searching for the Holy Land, a la santer, to the Holy Land or to the Holy Ground. Saunter is the word that comes from santer. I think it's a lovely word. I would like to say, as we, we're a few days away from Lent, would you saunter with me into Lent? Let's saunter together, a kind of gentle meandering into Lent, a wandering into the wilderness. And this year, finding a wilderness experience will not be difficult. In fact, we maybe, already maybe are in it. But as we wander into this wilderness, acknowledging our weariness and our downheartedness, let's be absolutely certain that we will meet the living God in that place of wilderness as we saunter, as we meander and wander. But it's not just a pointless wandering we're going to do. We want to pursue two themes. One is prayer, which is connecting our hurt and broken world, connecting our hurt and broken world to God. That's the role of prayer and we are that channel through which that prayer happens. We bring the prayers and the cries of our world to God. And then from God, we bring back in action, in how we live, we bring back God's love to our world. So prayer and action as two sides of one coin, or two flows uh, in one channel. And we're going to explore that a little bit in all the ways that we normally do through. Um, the nuggets are gonna take on a new shape at six o'clock. The phone line is going to be revamped slightly with some different content. Our huddles are, we're going to follow a course if anybody wants to join us. You'll hear more about that. Um, the WhatsApp groups, the Facebook, uh, the app, the website, the gatherings online. 
And there's going to be some surprises. There's going to be some fun. There might even be some things arriving at our doors occasionally. Um, And like I said, there will be some fun. I think the thought of a crowd of us watching some poor soul showing us how to flip a pancake on Tuesday night could be great. And pancakes flipping around all over Beaver Church and surroundings would be wonderful on Tuesday. But join in whatever way you can. Now, as we draw this to a close, have, have you been allowing those words we've heard the last two Sundays read to us from Romans 8? about nothing can separate us from the love of God. We're going to hear those again in just a moment, followed by a song sung by Amy Patton, and the song is called I Belong, and it also picks up some of those words. Then straight after that, Chris is going to lead us into our prayers this morning. But let's pause just before Emma reads again those words from Romans 8. Wherever you are, I'm hoping you're in a soft seat because I want to encourage you, would you slide down and just relax there. Sink into the seat as if God was enveloping you in his presence. His presence is sometimes experienced like like warmth, like feeling that something is being restored inside of us, like feeling safe and secure, like there is purpose and meaning to the difficult circumstances around us, like there is, are yet things to be discovered, but they're there for us and they're good. So Lord, help us just to sense your presence today. Thank you that you're around me, Thank you that you're around everyone listening or watching to this, watching this. And that somehow mysteriously we are connected and we belong and we're in your family. And nothing can separate us from that, from your love and your care. So let's let's just listen to those words and then on into the song. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons. Neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above, or in the earth below, indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord.
Let us pray. Today, let's pray for anyone who feels that they don't belong. First of all, let's pray for anyone who feels that they don't belong in this city or in this country, who feels like they are an outsider or an other. We pray for anyone who feels that they don't belong because of their background or their skin colour or their accent or their language or their culture. Anyone who feels that they don't belong because of their standard of education or their sexual orientation or their political affiliation. How many and varied are the ways that people can be made to feel other. We pray that they will belong. We pray for all agencies of inclusion and welcome for the Belfast Multicultural Association, for all nations ministries, for the Larder, for Touchline here in the parish, Anything that with a conversation, a phone call, a random act of kindness, a friendly contact, a welcoming smile, helps someone to feel that they belong. We pray for anyone who doesn't feel like they belong to a community, who feels disconnected after weeks and months of isolation and distancing. For anyone who worries that friendships are slipping away, that family relationships are becoming distant. For anyone who is struggling with loneliness and exhaustion and isolation and maybe even depression. For anyone who is grieving the loss of touch, of handshakes, of hugs. For anyone who feels that they are just me, myself, alone, rather than part of something greater. Nothing can take me from And 
we pray for people who feel that they don't or couldn't belong to the family of God. Anyone who thinks that maybe mistakes they have made or choices or regrets have somehow disbarred them, that they feel they are not good enough. We pray for people who struggle to know that they are loved, that they are children of God. We pray for anyone who struggles with self-doubt or self-hatred. For anyone who lets that inner critic drown out the voice that says, you are loved, you are precious, you are valuable, you matter. And we draw together all our prayers as we pray the Lord's Prayer together. We belong to this family who are able to pray with confidence and with love. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. 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 And how great, how great to be able to pray those prayers. How great to belong to a church and a community and a family. How great to be children of a loving father. How great. How great is our God? Hudson's over to you. We know a song about that.
we're drawn to a close now. And can I just say that there's been love, some lovely contributions to today's service. Now there always are, but I, I enjoyed, maybe it was just me, I enjoyed some of them very much today. So thank you to everybody who's taken part in this and for the many other things that are happening all around us. Many things that we never even hear about. But I'm down in the church at the minute. I had to come down here because there's something we have to do according to church law. And I'm wearing my hat, which isn't according to church law, but that's because it's Baltic in here. So I need to show you something on the, the door frame here. So there it is. Yeah, registration for General Vestry closes on Tuesday the 23rd of February and the Easter Vestry, our AGM, is on Sunday the 18th of April. We're required to display that on the church door. Now that's the inside of the door. Uh, a very ancient custom uh, and we still do it but since I thought you're unlikely to be in here to see that so that's a wee photograph of it. Proves I've done it and also lets you see the dates. Now. As we get ready to, um, to move gently into Lent, uh, please don't be fearful about the extra demands upon us. We're going to try to do everything within what we've already been doing. Lots of opportunities, though, to maybe join in in ways that we maybe haven't done before. And let's, let's just see where it takes us. And let's expect that we will meet God in the middle of it all. But I've got a, a prayer to finish with today. I need to read it off my laptop here. It picks up some of today's themes. Keep us good Lord under the shadow of your mercy. In this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful. And lift up all who are brought low. That we may rejoice in your comfort. Knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus our Lord. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all. Evermore. Amen. So have we looked at the announcements. Somebody's gone to the bother of making it all happen. And makes it all very beautiful. So have we look and see what's going on there. And uh, I'd love to see love to see you on Tuesday night uh, for flipping a pancake and we'll see what happens yeah, it's going to be fun if nothing else so thank you see you soon keep everybody else safe bye bye